Welcome everyone. Welcome to our last talk this afternoon. My name is Vivia. I will be introducing our speaker. I would like to first give thanks to the uh, to acknowledge that we are on unceded and ancestral lands of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the tsleil Nation. And on behalf of us all, I give them thanks for using their land. Our last talk this afternoon is by Alicia Lino. She will be covering generative AI in content marketing, risks, opportunities, and endless creativity. Let's give a hand to Alicia. Hey everyone, how's it going? Microphone working? Okay. We're good in the back? Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, so yes, as uh, she mentioned, I'm Alicia Lino. I'm from Victoria, BC. I'm so happy to be back at WordCamp Vancouver and seeing everybody in person again after, you know, from the before times. Um, so really quickly, I'm the content marketing director for GoDaddy, came to GoDaddy via the Sakuri acquisition in 2017. I'm just an AI enthusiast. I'm not really a specialist in any kind of regard. I just like to tinker with these sorts of tools. Uh, and I've been working with WordPress since 2014. And you can find me almost everywhere at Art Deco Tech. Um, so first of all, just a show of hands, who here has been using tools like ChatGPT already? Yeah, pretty much, like who hasn't? Come on, uh, uh, that's okay. We're gonna cover that for you too. Um, how about other tools like AI, AI art generators, voice, sound tools, anybody mess around with those? Okay, cool, so we have some, of you, uh, some other enthusiasts in the room. Great, well I have uh, hopefully some things for you as well too, but feel free to speak up during Q&A if you have um, some good suggestions for tools I've missed. I'm obviously not gonna cover them all. I also wanted to say this is gonna be an interactive session, so please help me improvise. Um, when we do prompting with AI tools, the uh, variables, the things that we put in that are unique to your goals and your use case are really what get the best results. So I'll be looking for ideas for things like business ideas, industries, products, projects that you may be working on, or just ideas you wanna throw random stuff at me, go for it. Um, elements like tone and style, image or icon descriptions once we get to the art generation section, um, content topics and keywords for SEO, target audience and competitors. So start dreaming up some stuff to throw my way. I'll be asking for hands around the room. All right, quick overview of the sections we're gonna cover. First, we're gonna cover very importantly, as I mentioned in the subheading for this talk, there are risks and limitations to using AI. Not everybody's team AI, and that's fine. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of those. They're really important. It's only gonna be one slide. Then we'll get into the demo. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about how machine learning works. So not gonna go in depth here. Like I said, not an engineer. I don't build AI tools. Um, but just helpful to have a little bit of an overview. And then finally, we'll just go over some tips for getting the best results from prompting. I'll give you a list of tools and then um, some resources so that you can keep learning. And then of course Q&A. So feel free to again, throw some stuff at me. Hopefully I get through this. Uh, I was definitely over time when I was practicing, so I've tried to cut some things so we can get lots of time for questions at the end. All right, first up, limitations and responsible use. There's four main sections here. These are kind of the really big ones that we use at GoDaddy when we're considering our use of AI. And it being a large company, we have a lot of restrictions and a lot of ways that we're looking at it from both the privacy and the legal and the PR sides. Um, so number one is always manually review AI-generated content. If you haven't heard of hallucinations, that's the term that they use in AI for when AI just makes stuff up. It'll you know, combine different things, different sources, and come up with something, or it'll fill in the blanks for something that you didn't provide it. So you always want to be looking it over and making sure that it's accurate, fact-checking. Um, once I asked ChatGPT to generate a list of quotes, it generated stuff that with is like, Steve Jobs said this, like, no, he didn't. <laughs> you cannot actually find a source for that. So just be very careful, um, you know, with any claims, especially from a legal point of view. And um, also ChatGPT, the free version that a lot of you have used, only has data up to 2021. You know, some tools like BARD are, have access to the internet, but again, not everything on the internet is accurate, as we all know, so just be careful. And at the end of the day, if you're gonna write something and uh, with AI's help, make sure that it's something that you stand behind if you're gonna publish it. Um, number two, never enter sensitive or confidential information. There's been some cases like Samsung employees getting uh, in trouble for putting company in sensitive data into ChatGPT and it getting leaked. Um, I used to work for Sakuri. If you don't know, website security for WordPress, they're awesome. Um, so my background in cybersecurity, like we know that there's no such thing as a 100% secure system. It's very likely tools like ChatGPT will get 
breached at some point. So if you're using it as a therapist or using it for anything like super sensitive, don't like just know that it may, like anything on the internet, become exposed in the future. Um, and also, these tools that are free, they're using your data to train the models. Um, I can't remember what the quote is, but if you're using a free service, it's free because you're the product. So, you know, just be aware what you're putting in. Um, don't put any company info. Don't put any PII, personally identifiable information. Um, one of the cases we talked about at GoDaddy is if we have a case study for a customer and the customer's name is in that study. Well, if you put that customer's name into the chatbot or into the system, it's now using that name, searching that name on the internet, maybe making really, like, you just put that person's name into the AI training models. So even something as sensitive, as small as that, um, could be sensitive or confidential info. Three, AI lacks emotional intelligence. So content could be discriminatory. It all depends on who's training the models. Um, there are malicious people out there doing intentionally toxic things with some uh, AI systems. Um, and there are tools that are being used to combat that, but just be aware that AI, one of the things I like to say is that it will never have a human heart, it will never be able to love. So that is one of the areas where, you know, future, like, uh, sort of careers are somewhat safe um, if they involve human connection, and ultimately content creation does involve human connection. Um, one of Google's recent updates to their search algorithm, um, as was mentioned in an earlier talk, um, Jackie Bolin, um, you know, it, it, it involves uh, expertise, um, authority, and trust. And they're starting to look more now when Google's ranking things at personal experiences. So you'll start to notice in Google search results, there's more like videos of people talking about them using a product because we know that's not AI generated. So we're pretty sure <laughs> that there are some video AI tools now. Um, but anyway, that's, that's just something you need to look at with the output again, um, just making sure that it is, um, you know, uh, not discriminatory, not toxic. Um, one other example I was just talking about with somebody in the hallway track was um, there was a great, there's a great uh, investing company for women and they put out an ad where they generated AI art with mid journey and the prompt was like entrepreneur, investor and like there were no pictures of women. So like just no stuff like that is out there like with anything else we need to think about um, diversity, equity and inclusion. And then last, you can, you can, a lot of tools like ChatGPT have an opportunity to flag um, and to rate as well, and I highly recommend you do use those because that feedback really, really helps. Yeah, thank you. Um, last one, this one's really important, is be careful with intellectual property. This is where a lot of people who are not team AI <laughs> have concerns. Um, you know, if you're in a creative field, we all know about the strikes going on and that sort of stuff. Um, anything that's generated is likely containing, possibly containing copyrighted information. There are more tools that are being developed that are trying to um, help make sure that artists are getting compensated when their work is being used as part of um, a generated answer or content. Um, you could also be using something that was generated from your competitor's content, which would be pretty embarrassing. Um, and they're, we're still working out as a society how we're gonna respond to these. So it's something that's always changing, something to be aware of. Um, use your judgment and at the end of the day, I'm not a lawyer talk to a lawyer um, and consult your legal team. All right, I did want to spend lots of time on that one because it is important, but now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. So last thing, uh, Canada just released this recently, which is um, their guidelines on using generative AI for um, employees of the government. So that's a really cool resource if you want to see more on the risks and limitations. All right, next one. All right, so why we're actually probably here, most of us hopefully, are, are to talk about how we can use it to supercharge our content marketing. We can do things like automating content creation, Using it for SEO is a great use case, and social media especially. Personalizing experiences by being able to, um, you know, have some uh, information, not personally identifiable, about customers in order to generate unique, personalized, targeted emails and such. Um, we can unlock insights by getting it to summarize and classify um, and, you know, sort of list pros and cons with a bunch of information, things like summarizing a bunch of user reviews or um, user studies, and streamlining workflows and planning. This is my favorite, actually. I use uh, ChatGPT almost every day to generate like briefs for projects and business cases because I can just free write into it and it makes it super clean and well organized. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about design. So the art side of generating content, you can create great visuals for your blog, for YouTube thumbnails, for social. Um, you can actually customize graphics. Some of you may know about generative fill for um, uh, Photoshop and there's some other tools like that um, in painting and out painting. 
You can create icons. Um, you can also generate infographics and presentations like this one, for example. That last slide was generated with AI. Um, you can see I'm in Gamma app here and I asked, please add a new card about using AI for designs in your content marketing. Sure, I'll start writing a card. All right, and then I said, let's add some bullets and emojis. Uh, and that's what it ultimately generated. And again, I reviewed it, I tweaked it, so it worked for me. Um, but those last two slides were, were generated with AI. All right. Oh, don't worry, I'll show you. <laughs> so, um, like I said, there's like, I don't even know how many, like thousands probably of tools right now. Um, and there's a great resource at the end, so stay till the end if you want to see um, a, a website where you can find a lot of these tools. Um, but I'm going to do five demos today. Hopefully, I will have time to get through them all. Um, but obviously, we're going to talk about ChatGPT, make sure everybody gets a look at it. Um, we're going to talk about GPT for Work, which is a plugin that uses OpenAI. OpenAI creates ChatGPT, um, their API key in Google Sheets. You can use it in Excel as well. We're going to look at MidJourney, which is my favorite tool for AI art. AutoDraw, which is a new one by Google for creating icons and clip art. And then Gamma App, which is the one I'm using for this presentation today. All right, oops, let's uh, go to the demo. You still all looking? Okay, cool, let me make this biggie. All right, so chat.openai.com, for those of you who haven't used it, I'm just gonna log in really quickly. Hopefully my password will autofill. All right, so it's basically like chatting with your friend in a text message, so we're gonna start a new, um, prompt here and just type our message. I'm actually gonna be stealing my prompts from my own team's prompt library. We're gonna start off here. These are all free available on smallbusinessprompts.com. I'm gonna start with our content creation section and we're gonna generate a content calendar. So get ready, I'm gonna need some uh, audience participation for a business type. So this prompt is embody the strategy of a skilled content manager and develop a comprehensive six month content calendar for a business in the industry. Um, the calendar should account for relevant holidays, industry events, and unique content needs for each month, ensuring a consistent flow of content. Okay, who wants to give me a business type? Help me out here. Bakery, Bakery. okay, perfect. Um, yeah. Can we dim the light so the contrast is better? Is that possible? Is it me? Um, I'll, I'll read out some of this stuff too, but um, I don't know if there's somebody who's able to hit the lights in the back, but we can try it. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in. Certainly creating a comprehensive six month strategy and boom, there you go. It's got October, week one, content theme. Ooh, look at the mood. <laughs> it's, it's good, right? Okay, um, now I gotta put my brightness up or I'm not gonna be able to see. All right, <laughs> so week one, content theme. Welcome to our bakeries, fall extravaganza. So it's aware of the season. Meet our bakers behind the scenes, spooky Halloween. Um, it's going through all the months, like I said, which is awesome. I'm not gonna uh, you know, get too into these, but let's say um, make these more for Vancouver. Oh, typing in front of people, all right. <laughs> all right, so let's see if it did it. I mean, it's using the Vancouver keyword, which is pretty cool. Um, I would hope that somewhere in here, okay, it said Vancouverites, that's pretty cool. It knows the correct terminology for somebody from Vancouver. Pacific Northwest, it might even, sometimes I've noticed I did this for Seattle once, it mentioned the Space Needle at some point, like, um, and now I'm like, okay, uh, put this into a spreadsheet. All right, that one always freaks me out at, the, at first. Oh, it's doing it, oh, that's an interesting format. I don't, I didn't, it's in Python this time, that's interesting. It did not do that earlier. But <laughs> um, it is, I don't know, it just decided why Python. Um, but yeah, you can copy and paste this. I, this actually might just be a new feature they just released. You, I see you can copy it up here. And then in theory, I should be able to go. Yeah, so let's see if it works. Yep, well, nope, okay, that did not work. Who knows, this could be a, a new thing that it just is trying out. Let me try to regenerate and see if it does it again. There we go, that's what I'm used to. <laughs> All right, and this one does, I am fairly certain. So uh, it's made it, you know, six months of content planning in a couple minutes. I mean, again, I wanna look at this and make sure that it's uh, correct, but there you go, there's your, there's your content plan. Um, okay, let's do another one. So let's write a humorous video script. So um, I'm gonna need a, target audience and a product or service? Lawyers. 
Ooh, man, really? <laughs> Rough. Toys for lawyers. Toys for lawyers? Okay, thank you for that. That'll be. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Oh, okay, I'll read this out. So, lawyers. I know how to spell. Okay, act like an entertainer and write a video script that uses humor or entertaining entertainment to engage lawyers and promote toys. <laughs> Use a combination of humor, storytelling, and creative visuals to make the content engaging and memorable while still affecting, effectively promoting the product or service. All right, intro, a brightly lit stage with colorful toy props. Spotlight shines on a charismatic host. Host with excitement, ladies and gentlemen, attorneys and advocates gather around. Today we're about to embark on a legal adventure like no other. Get ready to unleash your inner child because we're diving into the magical world of legal toys, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, you guys can check this out and try it for yourself. I'm not gonna read the whole script to you. Um, please have fun with this kind of stuff. But yeah, I have actually used this to generate scripts for myself and it's pretty darn good. But again, notice that the prompts that we're using have a lot of uh, very descriptive language. It, it's telling exactly what the goal is that I want. Um, and, and we'll get into those tips a little bit later specifically. So, yeah. Um, okay, moving on, I'm gonna go back here to our prompt library and we're gonna go and we're gonna do some SEO stuff now. So. Um, SEO outlines. Um, so we have a bunch of stuff here. Definitely check out smallbusinessprompts.com if you want to check out any of these prompts. Um, generate an SEO content outline. This one has a ton of variables, so it's going to take us a minute, but it's a fun one. Um, and generally, I am not doing a best practice right now. I would recommend starting a new chat for every new like business type that you're doing because it does remember the history. Um, so we're just having a little bit of a, a crazy conversation right now. Okay, for, so business type. Anybody want to give me a business type? We're going to also need like SEO keywords for it, a target audience and competitors. So hopefully something we can all build on as a team. Scuba diving? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not going to come up with a business name. I'm just going to let it do that for me. Um, in the, I guess it's like, what would that be? Enter, not marine, what? Travel? Tourist, Tourist industry. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, do we know any competitors? So what I did er earlier was I just went scuba diving Vancouver, and let's see what comes up. Uh, Vancouver Diving Locker and Diving Center. Er, all right, cool. Um, the, do, 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 do. Where's my competitors? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Vancouver Diving Center, and shoot, what was the other one? Vancouver Diving Locker. Thank you. You know what? You don't need to correct your spelling with uh, ChatGPT. Liquor. Probably that would have been weird. Okay. <laughs> All right. The blog post topic is uh, let's, what's a good topic for a scuba diving company? International destinations. Okay. Scuba diving. And the tone of voice. I'm gonna veto that one. I'm so sorry. That's just weird. okay. You know what? No, let's try it. Let's try it. Political. Sassy. Okay, sassy. I like sassy. Very sorry. That was gonna be a weird one. It was just gonna be too weird. With the target audience of all right. Hmm? Pirates. Pirates? Oh my gosh. Okay. You guys are really stretching this. Okay, so let's go with like scuba diving destinations. Scuba diving pirates. Yeah. All right, great SEO keywords. I'm sure there's lots of search volume for those. Okay, let's see what happens here. Oh. All right, it's going ahead. So blog post title, our unveil, oh, let me just read the prompt, sorry. <laughs> I'm doing scuba diving. Yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna read the prompt to you. You guys can get it on the website. Um, all right, the hook, the hook, because we asked for a hook in here. You wouldn't have read that because I, I didn't read it out, but whatever. The hook is, ahoy there, ye scallywags of the deep blue. Ye be in for a treat today as we chart a course to international scuba diving destinations fit for the saltiest pirates. Um, <laughs> Every section, as we asked for in the prompt, has the SEO keywords, why we're writing this, and you can send this to a writer and ask them to write it, and they'd be like, this is awesome, thank you for this detailed brief. Um, so there you go, there's your, there's your outline for your SEO optimized post with some additional um, recommendations at the bottom. Whew, all right, how are we doing here? We're good. All right, next one, um, oh yeah, so I, I cut out a bunch of stuff. They were all gonna be from the prompt library, so check it out. Um, I've been using these prompts that my team like generated together. We 
circulated them with a bunch of AI enthusiasts at GoDaddy, and we hired a prompt engineer to refine and test them. So they're really great. If you want to learn more about prompting, there's some great examples in there. But I want you to know you don't need smallbusinessprompts.com. We'll take you there to um, the GoDaddy resources blog. So you don't need to be a fancy prompt engineer to make a good prompt. So somebody just give me a business and a branding. Somebody give me a business, business type. Antiques, okay, we'll do antiques and like a description for a brand. Austere, Austere. okay. Give me a blog, oh, let's say blog, Ugh, white paper, no, let's do blog post. Blog post about antiques, oh my God, in an austere tone of voice, right? So not a mega prompt, just a little bit of a description to make it unique um, and it's about antiques, okay. That's it. <laughs> and it's going to go ahead and start um, using that language um, to generate a blog post. And so again, review it all, make sure it's accurate, make sure it's on brand and using your voice and whatnot. Um, but now let's say, okay, I want to um, make social captions for Instagram and Twitter to promote this blog post. And there you go. It's got emojis, it's got little hashtags. Um, so I don't write my own captions for social ever anymore. Um, did you? So I'm assuming you could um, tell it like I want like a team of words. You're just giving it a lot of it. 100%. Yeah, you can give it the word count. That was the question. So yeah, if you have a specific word count, if you're getting SEO briefs from an SEO team, um, you, can definitely, you can definitely do that. You could paste in a blog post that you wrote or just what you have as an idea and ask it to turn it into a thousand words. Yeah. This is just the free chat GPT. Yeah. Yeah, which I believe is based on 3.5. So um, you can pay for the upgraded version. It is better. It is much better, which I know Aaron covered in his earlier talk. Okay, enough of chat GPT. We're gonna go on um, and move on to the demo of GPT for Sheets. So this is an actual use case that I used for um, GoDaddy. We migrated our blog to a headless WordPress instance in June. It was a lot of work. Um, GoDaddy has been blogging for 10 years without any stopping to consolidate or audit the content apparently. Well, no, that's not true. But there were 2,800 blog posts and we had like 300 tags and categories. It was really a mess. So we came up with a brand new taxonomy. As you can see here, we've got four main categories. Um, like I think it's like, is it? 17 subcategories and 30 tags. So how am I going to re-tag, recategorize 2,800 blog posts, right? So I had um, the tech team just export everything. Um, I'm only showing you the ID and the title tag today, but we had the URL, we had everything. I could put the meta description in here if I wanted to pull all that from the database. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool called GPT for work. So what you do is in Google Sheets, you can go to add-ons, get add-ons. It is free. Um, GPD for Sheets and Docs, I think that's it. I use this one by Talarian. It's the one that's got the most reviews right now. Um, and I've got it installed already. And then what you wanna do is come down to extensions again and go to set API key. And then this little sidebar thing you will open up and you wanna go to your OpenAI account. So chat.openai.com is ChatGPT, but if you just go to openai.com and go into your personal settings, you'll be able to find your API keys or create a new one and then you'll be able to plug that in here. I've already got it in, but that's how you set it up. That's it. And then um, what I wanna do now is I wanna um, use the functions available in GPT for work. So they have a, a lovely little documentation, um, gptforwork.com. And uh, you can take a look at all these, they're really cool. So for example, you can just have a GPT prompt. Like if you use this syntax equals GPT prom uh, uh, the prompt. So like write a tagline for an ice cream shop. You can also, if you want, give it a value. So like write it based on this, what's in this cell. Um, I'm not gonna go over these in detail. I'm just gonna go to the one we're gonna use today. We're gonna use GPT classify. And for that one, I need to say, okay, e whoop, equal GPT, I'm sorry, classify. And then I wanna classify this blog post. The next part of the um, syntax is to set the category. So if I look down here, 
right? I absolutely need to have a value for what I want to classify. I need to have a value for the categories. And this can be a comma-separated categories that I could put right into the function. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this range of categories here. And that's it. Um, I don't know if there's any other. You could put examples. That's a whole other thing. Uh, I'm going to let you guys watch. They have great videos on this if you want to see it. Um, but I'm just going to run that. And it's going to go ahead and pick whichever category it thinks is the best from this list here. And then um, I'm not going to drag it down. Actually, let me drag it down just to show you, because I messed this up the other day when I was testing my demo. Um, as those of you who are familiar with spreadsheets know, I didn't um, set them to be consistent. So you can see the numbers are changing here. So what I actually wanted to do was go like this and make sure that it isn't dragging it down. Because if I come down to here, it's grabbing from this range. <laughs> so just uh, it started making stuff up, and it's actually not supposed to do that. So I was reading the docs, and it's like, I don't know how it's making this up. Because if I just go like GPT underscore classify and don't give it an actual parameter, it's not going to do it. It's going to error out, and I didn't understand it. So anyway, if you want to know what categories you should be using, you could do this on your existing posts. But um, what I did is I, I just actually made sure these are consistent, and then um, dragged it down. So I'm not going to do a subcategory. It's literally the exact same thing, but with this range, um, GPT tag is another really interesting one. So rather than a single category, um, which is what the classify function does, this one allows you to add tags. And so right now, I didn't put in any other parameters. It is making these up based on what's in the title. So I do, however, have a list of tags that I want to use. I don't want more tags. I'm trying to get rid of tags. So in this case, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to set my range. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And um, I think for this one, you actually have a couple more required sections. So here's DPT tag. Um, nope, we're good. Yeah, we're right. This is the only one you need. Um, I want to just quickly talk about top K. So, um, or sorry, temperature. You'll see temperature sometimes in AI stuff. Essentially, zero means don't be creative, stick to this list. And one means be as crazy as you want. So anywhere between that, like 0.5 is the midpoint. Um, and then uh, the top K is the maximum number of tags to return. So I actually do want that. I don't want it to be like a forever list of tags. So I'm just going to maximize at four. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I know what I did. I missed um, in the syntax, it's the value, what I want to tag, the title, the range of tags. I didn't put any examples in, so that's why it was mad at me. Um, and then it, this, the top K is the number. So once again, I want to make sure that I am making my range static or whatever. And then I can drag this down to the whole list and have 2,800 blog posts tagged and categorized like that. So that is how I saved my team like two weeks of work. and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I love this tool. It's really great. Um, and we did manually review. We did. But it was much faster for me to separate, like, you each get 300 blog posts to look at and make sure the tags and categories are right um, than to make them come up with them on their own. Um, one other thing I found is, like, oh, crikey, we have all these tags that we need to retain, right? We already had a bunch of tags. We just wanted to get rid of some of them. But there were some that were, like, I want to make sure that, you know, the ones, the articles with video still get tagged with articles with video. So there is no GPT for work function for this. I had to ask chat GPT, hey, can you build me an Excel function? I'm trying to fill in from a, find this in this range of uh, cells here and then, um, you know, put it into this one. So it, I'm, I added this like last minute to my presentation, but I just thought it was really cool. This function right here, for anybody who's an Excel junkie or like likes formulas, like I would never have been able to write this function by myself. It has like multiple things going on. So um, use ChatGPT if you are an Excel wizard and you just need help figuring out what your um, formula should be. It's really great for that. Um, and all of that classification that I did cost my team 18 cents with the API usage. So. All right, moving on. How are we doing here? We're getting close, aren't we? OK, Midjourney. So um, for those of you who haven't heard, Midjourney is a really great AI art generation tool. You can get started at Midjourney and just click Join the Beta at the bottom here. It is going to open Discord. So for those of you um, who haven't used it, um, you'll get into the Midjourney um, channel here. And then you can come into one of the newcomer rooms here. And you'll see people generating art all the time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I have like a room set up that we just used yesterday. I literally just prompted it for WordCamp. That's what it came up with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, so I'm gonna ask for some more audience participation because that's always the fun part. So before I do that, I wanna cover a little bit about what it looks like to um, prompt for mid-journey. And um, there are really great guides out there for, for Dolly, for example, which is OpenAI's art tool. That's the one that's getting, it's getting connected to ChatGPT soon. They just talked about releasing Dolly 3. Right now we're on Dolly 2, but there is a Dollary gallery uh, guide. It's like a PDF on prompting, and it's very extensive if you're into AI art generation. Um, I really like Midjourney's docs. Um, if you go to their docs.midjourney.com under getting started, next steps, you'll find this one, explore prompting. So I'm just going to quickly scroll through this, um, and then I'm going to ask you all to help me come up with a prompt, and we'll generate some art. Um, so first you want to pick a medium. You can um, get really specific. We can time travel, put it into different periods. You can give the cat different emotions. These are, you don't have to put all this in, but it's just really helpful to think about the different ways um, that you can generate art, color, and the environment. So let's just for fun, um, we're gonna start this and then we're gonna move on because it takes a minute to generate. Um, and what you wanna do is just slash imagine once you have, once you're in the mid-journey in Discord. Um, anybody wanna give me some starters for a prompt? We're gonna make a good one so I can take a couple people's suggestions. A dragon? Okay, tell me more about the dragon, somebody. With pink wings. With pink wings. Where is this dragon with pink wings? On the beach delivering pizzas. On the beach delivering pizzas, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that gonna be a tough one? Let's see what happens, okay. So what Midjourney is now doing is, um, I am not an expert in this, but I think it's called like diffusion, and essentially you're gonna see it in a minute um, when it decides to start. It'll be sort of like static on a television and then slowly it's gonna to start to take shape. And it's basically looking at its models for everything that I've asked it for and just being like, yes, no, how close are we? We wanna get within like 80% of like what she's asked for here. Um, so watching it come together can be super um, trippy. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, we're almost there, we're at 93%. There you go, so that's our dragon delivering pizzas on the beach. Um, so I'm not gonna go in depth into mid-journey, but if I wanted a different aspect ratio, you can do that. All that is in the docs. Um, U is for upscale, V is for variations. So if I'm like, I like this one the best, that's the third one, I can create variations on three or I can upscale it and ultimately use that in uh, my content. So yeah, there you go. So that's mid-journey <laughs> really quickly. Okay. Um, I. It is free, yeah, it is free. You can pay for like faster as well. Um, I just learned about this one today. Marcus tweeted about it, Ideogram. It's also free, you hook up your Google. Um, it's got some uh, really helpful sort of pills here to help you get the best out of it. Um, or you can pick a lucky style. I'm not gonna demo it, I just found out about it. And um, along with other stuff on smallbusinessprompts.com, my team has been creating guidance for how to um, get the best out of your prompts and stuff. So we do have guides as well as the prompt library. All right, quickly, auto draw. Um, so I, I stopped here on like the demo. This is Google's new experiment where, as you can see, you draw a really crappy Pictionary picture and it um, gives you some icons to select. So somebody, somebody nice, give me something to draw and we're gonna try uh, seeing what, what comes up. A balloon, okay, that's probably doable. All right, all right, all right, I'll try. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Was I just drawing or auto drawing? I might've just been drawing there. Um, oh, here it is, look it. So you want a favicon for your site? You know, you want icons for your site? This thing's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that <laughs> right, so there's mushrooms, I don't know, there's popsicles, like there's a football helmet, so um, hopefully somewhere in here, I mean, it goes on, it goes on, right? And it's just using AI to sort of detect, you could literally, I don't know, do we wanna just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I could probably honestly just be like loop de loop and like you know come up with stuff, right? Um, so there you go. So this tool is pretty fun and has some really unique applications for, for us as WordPress users. All right, Gamma app, last one. How am I doing for time? Good? We're good? Okay. All right, we're almost there. Uh, so last one, Gamma app. This is the one. Um, that I'm using for this presentation. I'm gonna create a new one with AI. I'm gonna generate it. And right now, my buddy Ben is talking about WordPress security and y'all should be embarrassed. You should have gone to that talk because that's really important. No, just kidding. But we're gonna generate, <laughs> we're gonna generate um, a, a little presentation based on his talk. So uh, let's do a presentation. It can also do documents and web pages now. What do you want your presentation to be about? I'm just gonna paste in from his, um, from his description. All right, here's the outline. 
for WordPress security. Do you like that? Great. This is using a credit system. As you can see in the bottom, I have 620 credits still in my free account. This one's going to cost me 40. We are going to see increasingly services based on pricing for credits. Um, Photoshop is going to be doing this with generative fill. All right. There you go. It's building it. Um, cool. It's asking me for stuff I don't want it to ask me for. Um, but it's taking its time really at the top here. And I can choose a style. I can change it. Um, here's my buttons. Excellent. And then I guess once it's done, it'll let me actually see it. Hopefully. Pick a theme. Oh, continue. There we go. Awesome. So it's going ahead and writing a bunch of slides for me now. So please watch Ben's talk and see if this was accurate to what he wanted to talk about today. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, I'm, I'm getting close. I got, I got more slides to run through, right? How are we doing? Five o'clock? OK, cool. Rock on. OK, let's go through a couple more. Yeah, anyway, yeah, there you go. Use it. It's free. Try it out. Gamma app. OK. Uh, there were some people asking in the previous talk about detecting um, AI uh, generated content. There are some tools. This is not an exhaustive list. I will have a bit.ly at the end with my slides because I'm going to go through this pretty fast. Yeah. Um, also, there are some for detecting AI images. Um, Hugging Face in general is a great site if you're interested in AI. Um, I don't need you to stop on all those. Okay. Quickly, how does generative AI work? Okay, imagine a huge like library of dog pictures, right? You train them, they're all ta tagged with dog, and then you ask the computer, is this a dog? It's like, mm, I'm 87% sure it's a dog, and 29% sure it's a cat. <laughs> so, you know, like, it starts to understand, and then you can ask it, okay, give me a dog. And we sort of did this already, so you, so you kind of know, like, Dolly was trained on realistic images, whereas Mid Journey was trained on, like, probably deviant art or something like that. Um, with LLMs, which is large language models like ChatGPT, you can imagine the data set is things like Wikipedia, Reddit, academic papers, all books that have ever been written. They pre-process the data by removing irrelevant or inappropriate data and then train the model based on all of that text being tagged and classified. And then we can say, write me Shakespeare. <laughs> um, translate this content because it understands the meaning in different languages much better um, and you know, answering questions. So that's how you get ChatGPT. Um, how to write effective prompts. You guys saw this with some of the examples. Specific and detailed is super important. Giving it a goal, what you're trying to get out of it. Requesting a specific format. You can do markdown. You can do code. You can do diagrams, um, spreadsheets, as we saw. Oops. <clears throat> don't worry about grammar. Uh, don't worry uh, about your sentence structure. Um, giving the AI a role can be helpful. I don't use this too much because generally it's looking to give you the best answer possible, but sometimes it can be helpful to tell it who it should behave like, what kind of consultant you want it to be. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, let, if you're generating content for an audience, letting them know who the audience is is helpful. Um, getting clarifying questions. Um, so you can, uh, this is something I saw in an article I link at the end where She's like, here's my whole SEO outline. Um, ask me any questions that you have to get the best out of this before you generate it. And then the chatbots will come back and say, I just have a few questions to make sure I have understood the assignment. So that's something you can do as well with the chatbots. Um, you can reply if you don't like the output, as you saw me doing. Um, and chat conversations usually have memory and can recall stuff you said earlier. So you don't have to constantly be saying the same thing over. All right, this is a list of AI tools. Again, slides will be at the end, so you can grab the bit.ly. Um, we talked about text and art tools. There's video tools for using avatars. There's really great sound tools. Um, so definitely check some of those out. Futuretools.io, this is a link I talked about before. This is where um, there's a ton of AI tools. There's just so many. They're rated. Um, you can click Matt's picks, and he usually picks his favorite ones, so that's a pretty good one. Um, and like I said, smallbusinessprompts.com, plug for my team. Definitely check that out. Subscribe to our Substack, please. <laughs> um, this recent article was on Forbes. It just was published like a few days ago. And this woman breaks down. She actually puts AI chatbots against each other. So she'll give them all the same task and breaks down who did it best and how they responded differently. So this is a really cool one linked in my presentation as well. And we made it. OK, cool. Bitly is there. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for that great talk. And now we're open for questions. Anybody have a question they would like to ask? Questions, anyone? Um, where do you see the future going? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Where do you see the 
general future. Sorry, I'm not used to speaking to a mic. Uh, <laughs> where do you see the future of things like ChatGPT? Just a broad, very broad question. Yeah, um, it's a really great question. So I think as it gets trained more on our use cases, it's going to be more integrated. I think ultimately you're going to be using ChatGPT or OpenAI's various models without knowing it. You you probably already are. Over the last year since ChatGPT was released, um, pretty much every company that is involved in tech that you use has been integrating it. So if you're not seeing it already, probably are, almost every tool you're using on your phone and in your computer is starting to integrate AI. Um, so it's going to be an unseen layer on top of everything. I was talking with some of my fellow speakers the other night about you know, mobile devices, like the invention of the iPhone. People are comparing it to that. We don't even think about it anymore. Mobile is just a layer on top of our civilization now, right? Some people have even compared it to the dawn of the internet. Like it's just going to be integrated with everything. I think personally as somebody who has a cybersecurity background, um, I see it having real world implications on how we are thinking about privacy and thinking about securing ourselves. Um, so that those two things, I think regulation is gonna be sort of the big thing. Um, and ultimately, uh, the applications in everyday use. Yeah. But I'm, an, I'm an AI optimist. I'm on Team AI, but I just think we do need to be careful about it for sure. We got another one over here. Oh, hi. Thank you very much for that oh, talk. That was great. Right over here. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> it's dark. Just thinking about like the future and saying Google has these algorithm updates, and if they want to penalize people who are using ChatGPT and want original mm. content. Like in blogging now and not to be penalized that by in the future, like what percentage of the blog article needs to be my own written words? Um, yeah. Those type of questions. And that's what kind of what I was thinking I was comment on that. Yeah, so I'm actually proud of this answer because I scooped my SEO team at GoDaddy on this one. When in February, Google updated their search guidelines. They didn't make a big deal out of, about it, but they actually reversed their position and they're fine with AI generated content. Their MO is to give you the most helpful answer so that you click on their ads. Right? We aren't going to use Google and click on the ads if they don't keep giving us the best info. So they will prioritize the best answer. They don't care if it's AI generated or not. But that's why fact checking and all this stuff is really important. Will we see a future where it's regulated, where you need to disclose that content was AI generated? I kind of hope so. Um, or at least that we have some sort of way of in indicating if what you're seeing is based on human creativity or not. Because I think that will be ultimately valued more um, in the world. That's my hope. Um, but I also, you know, ultimately see where real storytelling and personal experiences is also going to have an outsized impact on what the algorithm is ranking. Um, Google has just been starting to experiment with search generative experience, SGE. It's not really available in Canada as much. Um, they're starting to play with it, but you will see it where when you type stuff into Google, it just generates an answer for you. If you've, any of you have played with Bing AI, um, it's going to be like that. They're all trying to race to get the best answers to you, right? Um, so that is going to have a big impact on SEO, probably more than them deciding what to rank, is going to be surfacing just AI answers at the top of search and also prioritizing personal storytelling and actual real human experiences. Yeah. Hi. Um, I know we've been discussing about this for since chat GP3, I guess, that, uh, you know, would it eat up to a lot of employment? Now. Um, my my question is not that yes it would definitely but i guess do you you've worked r r you just worked on that for a pr big project right and what do you think would be um should be our our approach when it comes to chat gpt in your point of view while it gives us all all the good things yeah. all all the fancy things it does have repetition to it but what would your uh, say would be on that front? I would say just like with like the industrial revolution and like conveyor belts, like we probably took away some jobs, but we created a bunch of new ones. So I, you know, have a two year old and his future job probably doesn't exist yet. Um, so I think, and you know, when I came back from the holidays after having using ch used ChatGPT over Christmas, came back and told my team like, we're gonna change how we do content. We have to start building for helping small business owners use this and leverage it. Um, my writers on my team were really anti using it because they felt threatened by it. Now they see it as a tool in their arsenal, just like using Google, just like using spell check. Like it's something that they rely on for specific use cases. Um, but as I mentioned, real human creativity, real human experiences, and um, the parasocial relationships that we have with real people on the internet 
Um, those are going to be prioritized more, and I think they're going to be more valuable because we're going to know that they come from a trusted source. Um, so I think we may have to pay writers more. We may have to pay creators more, especially if their content is going to be used to train AI models. Hi. Um, by the way, like that website you guys put together, tell your team, like amazing. That's a really great resource. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the uh, the when you were doing the content audit of your own website and you're trying to match you know what categories and all that kind of thing is it is it just looking at what was in that first cell in terms of the title or could you make it go back and actually like if you had the URL in that that spreadsheet could go make it go back and search and read the content read the content and then categorize yeah. is that what's happening I it wasn't actually reading the content it was just reading the, um, the title, title in that case okay. that's why I said probably the meta description would have been a better use case it would have been more information but. In theory, it won't be that far off where it can be, can be like, hey, can you read this whole blog post and classify it for right, me? Right, here's the URL, um, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah, so our blog was actually built, the new framework was built by 10up, which we all love 10up, right, in WordPress. Yep. Um, and they have a tool uh, called Classify, Classify AI, that I'm trying really hard to get approved right now for GoDaddy because they do a lot of that, like auto tagging, auto captions, and alt tags on images. Like, just like the future is beautiful, guys. Like, when it comes to content, there's gonna be some really cool stuff um, being created to help us out. So. I think ChatGPT4 can read content from the internet too, though, so, yeah. Hi, great talk. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> all of us are, you know, looking into this because you have to. Um, have, you didn't mention uh, Copilot at all. I'm wondering if you've uh, explored that at all. I'm not a dev. I would love to learn more about it, though, so <laughs> somebody should definitely submit a talk for next year for WordCamp Vancouver. I'll come watch it. Yeah, I, I do have somebody writing for the blog. They're gonna, we're gonna be publishing it soon. They uh, did a blog post on writing, uh, developing custom post types for WordPress using ChatGPT. And one of my coworkers, Marcus, has built a lot of websites using like AI to help him code. Um, and that's just ChatGPT, but I imagine GitHub having access to all of those repositories as training data, it's just gonna be incredible to see what comes, yeah. yeah. Oh, Microsoft Copilot. I thought GitHub had a Copilot too. Am I wrong? They're the same. Oh, Microsoft are they? owns GitHub. Oh, shoot. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, what I'm excited for is like the Microsoft Outlook um, and like Gmail integrations for like all the AI stuff. Like, read my emails to me, summarize them, tell me how to respond. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Can you just archive all the emails that I usually archive? Because that's like 90% of what I get. Like, <laughs> Um, I have, oh, I'd like to echo like great presentation. This was Thank you. so much fun. Have you been following the the models that you can download and run locally? And if you have, do you have any opinions on them? I, I don't have enough time in my life with a toddler to like play with that, but I really want to. Like I tried Auto GPT and all that stuff, and I followed some um, Substack writers who. Uh, Aaron referenced it earlier. There was a writer who uploaded all of his journal entries for the last 10 years and like started querying it and he wrote his own chatbot essentially. So you can train it on your writing so it understands your tone of voice and how you speak and it can start to write like you and there are some freaky applications for that. Um, I would love to learn that stuff definitely one day when my kid can play on his own for hours at a time I'll be <laughs> learning how to do that. <laughs> Uh, yes, please. Have you investigated, first of all, present, excellent presentation. Uh, have you investigated behavior characteristics of the objects? Not only static static characteristics, like a picture, words, static, but behavior, it's number one. And number two, mm. have you also investigated user to with video objects? Yeah. So I'm not sure about the first question with behavior, sorry. Can you clarify? Behavior and video. Oh, in uh, video. Oh yeah, so like creating like animations. Yeah, so uh, I did do a little bit of searching around and I think some of the tools that I mentioned in this list, let me go back a little bit. Um, so I'm trying to use this one right now, Lumen5 creates videos based on blog posts. Synesthesia allows you to generate video with like human looking avatars. Um, this one, Runway, I hear a lot about. It's text to video and animations, so you describe what you want and it creates like uh, animated characters and that sort of thing. Um, this one I just saw demoed t uh, recently, HeyGen. Um, this is so cool for anybody who works with international content. Um, you can upload a video of yourself speaking and it will not only translate using your tone of voice, right, the audio, but it'll also change your mouth movements to match. It's crazy, yeah. 
So, um, sorry, you said, what was the other one? Video? Yeah, the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah so covered some of that. Uh, again, I would check out futuretools.io because they have, I'm pretty sure, a drop down in here for video somewhere. Video editing and um, text to video. Yeah, AI generated commercials, there's tons of stuff. I think uh, for the voice one, somebody, there's a video somewhere on the internet where gets ChatGPT to write uh, a rap by Drake about not liking beans in his chili, and then takes that into UberDuck, trains it on actual Drake songs, and then literally generates a song of Drake singing about not liking beans in his chili, and it sounds like Drake, like it's pretty cool. Um, but also terrifying. <laughs> yep. oh. oh, sorry. I have the mic. Yes, Hello. you have the mic, yeah. So this is a question for you, but also for all of us. Um, in terms of AI possibly taking over all our jobs, mm. um, what do you think about that? What do you all think about that? I mean, with tools like ZipWP coming out, that can generate a full website in like a few minutes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if anybody has heard of ZipWP. Um, yeah. It's a kind lot of, of crazy website and like are, yeah. I'm afraid and I'm not sure. Oh yeah, like what. there's, it's gonna shift, right? I think that um, <clears throat> theme developers had the same reaction when Gutenberg was announced, um, you know, and that sh shook up the industry. There's always gonna be advancements. We have to embrace them and accept them. and. I think ultimately uh, a lot of the AI generated content is gonna be um, very basic in the beginning. I don't think it's gonna be able to do the advanced customizations that a lot of like high-end enterprise developers like are, are being employed to do. I think it absolutely is gonna shift, but ultimately there's always gonna be people like my husband who runs an auto detail shop who hate computers, who are gonna need somebody to help them work this stuff out. I think probably um, the more cross-functional you can get if you are a developer or designer learning about digital marketing, ultimately the reasons you're doing what you're doing is so businesses can be successful. So learning how to integrate all these things and set up all these things for them so that they can focus on being successful as a business um, is gonna be really where you can diversify. But to answer your first question, like I don't think it's going to take all our jobs. I don't think it's yeah. Yeah. Creatives and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that is a real, very real concern. And I think that, um, like I said, I, I do believe that like real human experiences and finding ways to curate those, um, finding ways to um, inject like a human heart into the content is something that's going to be really difficult for AI to emulate. Um, but it may just mean that we need to shift as a society towards more human-centered careers, right? If things are going to get automated, we may need to see that as a benefit. If that means we can focus more on like healthcare and counseling and all these things that we need, where there's like teachers and stuff. So there may be a growth in those areas and careers where it's going to be very difficult for AI to automate. But it's going to be a weird next 15 to 20 years, y'all. Like <laughs> it is for sure. Just, just yeah. to add on my point of view also. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a great note to end it on. Yes. I just want to let you guys all know, please come to me. I'll be at the after party. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Thank you so much, everybody. Right. It's great to talk. Yeah.